Within hours of completing my Flux LoRa video, I logged on to find that IP adapter had been released for Flux. And so here we are with another tutorial on how to get IP adapter up and running on Comfy UI for use with Flux. Now, interestingly, the team that's released the IP adapter model and components for Comfy UI is Xlabs, one of the companies that provided us a set of models for use with ControlNet. They've also released a few other things, including a Realism LoRa, so this is definitely a company to keep an eye on. So let's not waste any more time. I'm Endangered AI, and let's get plugged in. So to get started with using IP adapter on Flux, we have to install a couple of things. First and foremost, head over into Comfy UI and the custom nodes that we need, Xflux Comfy UI, is available on Comfy UI Manager. So go ahead and install that first. While that's installing, head on over to the Xlabs AI Hugging Face page and we need to download a couple of things. And by the way, links are in the description down below. The first thing we need to do if you haven't done so already is install the Vit Clip. Now, if you've used IP adapter before with Stable Diffusion, you might already have this installed. If you don't, go to the link down in the description below and head over to this hugging face. Head on over to files and go ahead and download the model.save tensors file. Now, really important, when you download this model, go ahead and place it in your Comfy UI models clip vision folder. Great, now once you've done that, place the file into the clip vision folder and go ahead and rename it to something like clip v large so that if you have other clip vision models, you're able to know which is the right one. Now the XLA team have made things even easier because if you look at our next step, which is downloading the Flux IP adapter file, if you head over to the link down below, they've actually already placed the correct clip vision file here. So down in the description, I will only have one link and on that link, you'll be able to find both the files and they've even renamed it for you here. So as I've described, this model goes into the clip vision folder. Flux IP adapter is going to go in a separate folder, which I will explain in just a moment. So go ahead and download it. And once you've done that, go back to your models folder and we're actually going to create a new folder here called Xlabs. So go ahead and do that. And then inside, we're going to create IP adapters folder. Once so you've done that, open it and drag over the Flux IP adapter save tensors file that you've just downloaded. And that should be all you need to do to install and set up IP adapter for Flux. With that, let's head on in to Comfy UI. And if you were downloading the models while the nodes were getting installed, go ahead and restart your Comfy UI. Now the Xlabs team have given us a workflow for us to get started with for IP adapter with Flux. So go ahead and load it in here. You can find the file in the Hugging Face link that I provided down below. Now, if you're like me and did not refresh your browser after installing Xlabs custom node, go ahead and do that now if you are getting these red nodes when pulling in the workflow. And there we go. After refreshing, it's been able to load in all of the nodes. And let's go ahead and have a look at what's going on here. And by the way, if you're new to Flux, I have a video that explains how to get set up with Flux over here. And if you're new to IP adapter, I have a complete explainer over here with stable diffusion models. However, the same concepts should apply. Now, if we remember what IP adapter does, with IP adapter, you're able to take a single image of a concept and use that to help drive the image generation model to create images that are very similar or almost exactly to the reference face. Now, Flux has already been shown to be very good on its own in recognizing inputs as an image, so it will be interesting to see how much better IP adapter makes that process. So today, we're going to compare using an image as an input in image to image, how it compares when using IP adapter, and how it compares when using a LoRa, so that we can understand what are the best use cases for IP adapter. Going through the workflow, they've got the load image node over here where we're gonna put our reference image. They've given us a upscale and image crop node, which is going to resize the base image or the input image to the size that is going to be easy to read for IP adapter. In this case, it's either gonna be 1024 by 1024 if you're upscaling the image or 1024 by 512. And I believe you can go up to 1024 to, 10, to 1024 as well. So if your image is too small, you'll use the upscale image. If your image is too big, you'll use the image crop. From here, it feeds into apply flux IP adapter, which also takes in a model. In this case, I'm using the Schnell model for today. Then down here, we have the IP adapter flux input, which is connected to the load flux IP adapter node where we load in the IP adapter that we installed earlier. So we select here the IP adapter under clip vision. We should be selecting our clip L. We've got it here. The provider is set to CPU as we will be using the GPU for inference. And then finally the input image goes in here. 
all of this feeds into the xlab sampler now if you've downloaded the xlabs custom node and you're using their workflow this is a sampler that they've created that seems to work with flux having said that with the new updates with comfy ui you should also be able to do this with the vanilla k sampler or with the more broken down flux workflow that i mentioned in the previous flux video so regardless of whatever sampler you're using the inputs should be relatively the same we've got the model which in this case is coming from the ip adapter which takes in the ip adapter model and your flux model and feeds it into the sampler a conditioning node which in this case we are using clip text and code flux, a negative conditioning, which we can see down here as well, both of which are connected via clip to the dual clip loader. And I'll explain the difference between the two boxes in a moment. We have the latent image, which is pretty standard. It's the size of your latent image. And then there's a control net condition here. Now, as I mentioned in the in my control net video, Xlabs does have a control net model. The custom node set that we installed comes with a set of control net nodes, which I'll cover in a separate video. And so you can actually plug in control net into this. And finally, that feeds into a VAE decoder with the load VAE. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and feed in a trial image. In this case, it's this image of me, which is a 471 by 562 image. So that's definitely too small for the IP adapter. So we're going to keep it in the upscale image. Now, this is one of the images that I used to train the LoRa in my previous video. So let's see if it's able to give us a good quality image and we can compare it with some of the images from the LoRa. Now coming here to the text encoder, I said I would explain this earlier. We've got two boxes and they correspond to whatever you've got assigned here to clip name one and clip name two. The T5 encoder that you see down here is the one that does most of the heavy lifting for Flux. This is also the one that has the ability to take and generate text with the model. So you wanna put the bulk or the heavy part of your description in here and then the clip L is a smaller model, so you can put in smaller detail or, or more vague concepts in there. In this case, I'm just gonna flip them around and we're gonna make a really simple image. I'm gonna just put here, man taking a selfie in this. Okay, we're gonna leave everything else the same and let's see what we get. Okay, so that is absolutely terrible. Let's go ahead and try this. Oh, okay, so my mistake. Earlier, I had said the top one was for the T5 and the bottom one was for clip L based on how you've got them set up here. But I just realized that they are written over here. So let's move the prompt down to the T5 box and let's see what we get. Well, that's certainly still a far cry from anything decent. So if you're wondering why this is looking so garbage, the reason has to do with the fact that up until this point, we've been using the Schnell model. The new IP adapter as of this moment does not work with the Schnell version of the model. So you will need to be using the dev version. Now, this is not ideal, especially if you were hoping to use IP adapter for commercial uses. However, hopefully we'll get something better in the future. I also can't help but wonder if we'll get a version of IP adapter that will work with the pro or production version of the model. So if we go ahead and change Schnell to dev and run the same prompt again with the same image, we can see that we get something that is substantially better. Now, there's still a couple of issues here. There's a little bit of artifacting and so on, but the image is still definitely a far cry from anything that looks like me. It's got some of the traits, you know, the hair is kind of right, the ethnicity is right, the beard is right, but it, it looks like a, a different person. It does not look like me at all. We can try and play around with it by making some adjustments to the strength of the IP adapter. Let's crank that up to one. And drop the right and drop the guidance here to three. And let's see what we get. Oh goodness, we're, we don't seem to be getting anywhere better. The next thing I'm gonna try is the same prompt over in both boxes. And I'm also going to remove the man section. And the reason for that is, if you remember what IP adapter does is it takes an image and actually takes the image and turns it into text or conditioning that is used to help drive the image. So elements here, such as the fact that there is a man, the ethnicity and so on, don't need to be explicitly mentioned in the prompt. They can sometimes help, but they can sometimes make it worse. So let's go ahead and try it one more time. And then we'll try another experiment before I show you what the results from Alora looks like. And once again, we can see that the final output is a vague similarity to myself. I think it's a slightly better image, but I'm honestly still not very happy with this. 
On top of that, when using the IP adapter, we've got this strange artifact thing happening here as well. Let's try a different source image, although this should have been a good enough image. It's a simple frontal face image of myself. Sometimes using a different one can make a better impression. So let's go ahead and try this one out. It's not one that I'm particularly happy with. And let's try and queue it up. And somehow that's even worse. Uh, I did say earlier that the IP adapter is still in beta and X Labs themselves have said that it may or may not work very well, but that they do endeavor to push out new models and new updates over time. For comparison, here are some of the images from my LoRa video. And I think you can agree that the results are substantially better when bringing the appearance much closer to, to myself. However, if you're in a pinch and you've only got one image for reference, I guess IP adapter could work. We're just gonna do one more experiment and do a comparison with an image to image workflow directly. So if we come back to the standard Flux workflow, we're gonna go ahead and grab a load image. Let's use the original image that we had indicated. And all we're gonna do is just grab a VE encoder to turn the image back into latent. So image to pixels, we'll use the Flux VE to do that. And all we're gonna do is with the sampler custom advanced, instead of sending in an image that is just latent or just noise, we're going to go ahead and send in our VAE encoded image. Now, what should happen is a certain amount of noise will be injected that we can see here on top of the image, allowing us to work with it and manipulate it further. So let's give that a quick go. So that last result was really bad is because the source image I'm using, it's a little too small. So like we tried to do with the IP adapter, we are going to upscale it and run it again. And there you have it. Um, still not a great image in terms of its adhesion to the source image. Uh, it is a bit stretched because I've upscaled it to 1024 by 1024, which has stretched out the wider part of the image. So I think if we bring that down to 512, we'll probably get something better. But uh, in many ways, it's almost acted like a control net because so first of all, the image quality is a lot better than the IP adapter. Uh, it's got more elements that closely resemble myself. It's got the glasses right, the beard right. Um, the ethnicity is not right, but the overall structure of the face, the beard, the image quality is significantly better. And I think if we adjust the prompt to add in here, Indian man taking a selfie in Paris, that might provide a better result. Oh goodness. So by adding in a little more detail in the prompt, we've completely lost the mark. So what do you guys think? In my opinion, I don't think the IP adapter is quite where we need it to be, especially when compared to how it works with stable diffusion. And if you're looking to replicate the aspect of someone, I think doing a LoRa is still your best bet, particularly since image to image, while not providing as many correct references to the source image, ends up with image degradation that is not as good as image to image. What do you guys think? What will you be using? If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe and please come and check out the Patreon as all of my patrons are an important part of making these videos happen and I couldn't do it without you guys. We also have a Discord channel that you're welcome to come by, show us what you're working on. I especially love to see images that you've generated, new things that you're trying out and share it with the rest of us. I also invite you to drop by if you're having any issues as myself or someone from, as myself or someone from the community is also able to help out and answer any questions that you might have. Thanks, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.